I pray thee, Rosalind, sweet my cuz, be merry. Dear Celia, I'd show more mirth than I'm mistress of, and would you yet I were merrier, unless you could teach me to forget a banished father. You know my father hath no child but I. When he dies, thou shalt be his heir. For what he hath taken away from thy father perforce, I will render thee again in affection. Therefore, my sweet Rose, my dear Rose, be merry. From henceforth I will, cuz, and devise sports. Let me see, what think you of falling in love? Mary, I prithee do, to make sport with all. What shall be our sport, then? Call him hither. Young man. I attend him with all respect and duty. Young gentleman, your spirits are too bold for your years. I beseech you, punish me not with your hard thoughts, wherein I confess me much guilty to deny so fair and excellent lady as anything. Young sir, what is thy name? <laughs> Orlando, the youngest son of Sir Rowland de Bois. I am more proud to be Sir Rowland's son, his youngest son, and would not change that calling. My father loves Sir Rowland as his soul, and all the world was in my father's mind. Where's for me? One of suits with fortune. That could give more, but that her hand lacks means. Shall we go, cuz? Why, cousin? Why, Rosalind, Cupid have mercy, not a word. Is it possible on such a sudden you should fall into so strong a liking with old Sir Rowland's youngest son? The Duchess, my mother, loved his father dearly. Let me love him for that. Here come, look, here comes the Duke. With his eyes full of anger. Mistress, dispatch you with their safest haste and get you from our court. Me, uncle? You, cousin, within these ten days, if thou hast found so near a public court as twenty miles, thou diced for it. I do beseech your grace. Let me the knowledge of my fault bear with me. Thou art thy father's daughter. There's enough. If she be a traitor, why so am I. Pronounce that sentence then on me, my liege. I cannot live out of her company. You are a fool. You, niece, if you outstay the time upon mine honor and in the greatness of my word, you die. Oh, my poor Rosalind, whither wilt thou go? Wilt thou change fathers? I will give thee mine. Let my father seek another heir. Therefore, devise with me how we may fly. I'll go along with thee. Why, whither shall we go? To seek my aunt in the forest of Arden. Alas, what danger will it be to us, maids as we are, to travel forth so far? Beauty provoketh thieves sooner than gold. Were it not better that I did suit me all points like a man? We'll have a swashing and a marshal outside, as many other mannish cowards have, that do outface it with their semblances. What shall I call thee when thou art a man? I'll have no worse a name than Joe's own page, and therefore, look you call me Ganymede. But what will you be called? Something that hath a reference to my state. No longer Celia, but Alina. But cousin, what if we essayed to steal the clownish fool out of your father's court? Would he not be a comfort to our travel? He'll go o'er the wide world with me. Leave me alone to woo him. Let's away. Now, my comrades and brothers in exile, are not these woods more free from peril than the envious court? Sweet are the uses of adversity, which finds tons in trees, books in the running brooks, sermons in stones, and good in everything. I would not change it. Happy is your grace that can translate the stubbornness of fortune into so sweet and so quiet a style. But what said Jacques? I think she be transformed into a beast, 
for I can nowhere find her like a man. My lady, she is but even now gone hence. Here she was merry, hearing of a song. If she, compact of jars, grow musical, we shall have shortly discord in the spheres. Go seek her, tell her I would speak with her. She saves my labor by her own approach. Why? How now, monsieur? What a life is this that your poor friends must woo your company? What? You look merrily. A fool. A fool. I met a fool in the forest. A motley fool. A miserable world. As I do live by fo food, I met a fool who laid him down and basked him in the sun and railed on Lady Fortune in good terms. And set good terms. And yet, a motley fool. Good morrow, fool, quoth I. No, sir, quoth he. Call me not a fool till heaven have sent me fortune. And then he drew from a dial from his poke and looking at it with a lackluster eye says very wisely, it is 10 o'clock. Thus we may see, quoth he. How the world wags, tis but an hour ago since it was nine, and after one more hour twill be eleven. And so from hour to hour we ripe and ripe, and then from hour to hour we rot and rot, and thereby hangs a tale. The laugh an hour stands in her mission an hour by his dial. Oh, a noble fool. What fool is this? A worthy fool, one that has been a courtier. That I were a fool, I'm vicious for a motley coat. It is my only suit. Give me leave to speak my mind, and I will through and through cleanse the foul body of the infected world, if they will patiently receive my medicine. Under the greenwood tree, who loves to lie with me and turn his merry note unto the sweet bird's throat. Come hither, come hither, come hither. Here shall he see no enemy but winter and rough weather. More, more, I prithee more. It will make you melancholy, Monsieur Jacques. I think it. More, I prithee more. I can suck melancholy out of a song as weasel sucks eggs. More, I prithee more. My voice is ragged. I know I cannot please you. I do not desire you to please me. Well, I'll end the song. Forbear and eat no more. Why? I have eaten none yet. I almost die for food, and let me have it. Sit down and feed, and welcome to our table. Speak you so gently. Pardon me, I pray you. I thought that all things had been savage here. If ever you have looked on better days, if ever from your eyelids wiped a tear, let gentleness my strong enforcement be, in which the hope I blush and hide my sword. True is it that we have seen better days. Then but forbear your food a little while, whilst like a doe I go to find my fun. Thou seest we are not all alone unhappy. This wide and universal theater presents more woeful pageants than the scene wherein we play in. All the world's a stage, and all the men and women merely players. They have their exits and their entrances, and one man in his time plays many parts, his acts being seven ages. At first, the infant, mewling and puking in the nurse's arms. And then the whining schoolboy with satchel and shining morning face, creeping like a snail unwillingly to school. And then the lover, sighing like furnace, with woeful ballad made to his mistress's eyebrow. And then a soldier, full of strange oaths and bearded like the pard, jealous in honor, sudden and quick in quarrel, seeking the bubbled reputation even in the cannon's mouth. And then the justice, and fair, round belly with good cape and not lined, with a severe and bearded formal cut, full of wise laws and modern instances, and so he plays his part. The sixth age into the slips into the slippered lean and slipper pantaloon, with spectacles on nose and pouch on side, his youthful hose well saved, a world too wide for his shrunk shank, and his big manly voice turning again towards childish treble, pipes and whistles in his sound. Last scene of all that ends this strange eventful history is second childishness and mere oblivion, sends teeth, sends eyes, sends taste, sends everything. Well, um, good cousin, sing. Blow, blow the winter wind, no art not so wonderful. 
unkind as man's ingratitude. Thy tooth is not so keen, because thou art not seen, although thy breath be rude. Hi ho, sing hi ho, unto the green holly. you the shepherd's life, Master Touchstone? Uh, truly, shepherd, in respect it is in the fields, it pleaseth me well. But in respect it is not in the court, it is tedious. Wast ever in court, shepherd? Mm, no, truly. Then thou art damned. For not being at court, your reason. Why, if thou never wast at court, thou never sawest good manners. If thou never sawest good manners, then thy manners must be wicked, and wickedness is sin, and sin is damnation, shepherd. Touchstone, those that are good manners at the court are as ridiculous in the country as the behavior of the country is most mockable at the court. You told me you salute not at the court, yet you kiss your hands. That courtesy would be uncleanly if courtiers were shepherds. For instance, briefly. Why, we are still handling our ewes and their fells. You know they're greasy. Why, do not your courtiers' hands sweat? And is not the grease of a mutton as wholesome as the sweat of a man? You have too courtly a wit for me. I'll rest. Here comes young Master Ganymede, my new mistress's brother. From the east to western Ind, no jewel is like Rosaline. Let no fair be kept in mind, but the fair of Rosaline. <laughs> if a heart do lack a hind, let him seek out Rosaline, sweetest nut hath sourest rind. Such a nut is Rosalind. Oh, oh he, my, he that sweetest rose will find must find love's prick and Rosalind. Peace, you bell fool. Here comes my sister, reading. Stand aside. Nature presently distilled, Helen's cheek but not her heart, Cleopatra's majesty, Atalanta's better part. Sad Lucretia's modesty, Rosaline of many parts, of many faces, eyes, and hearts. Heaven would that she these gifts should have, and I to live and die her slave. How now, back, friends. Shepherd, go off a little. Go with him, sirrah. Oh, come, shepherd, let us make an honorable retreat. Didst thou hear without wondering how thy name should be carved and hanged upon these trees? Trow you who hath done this? I pray thee now, tell me who it is. Oh, wonderful, wonderful, and most wonderful, wonderful, and yet again wonderful, and after that out of all hooping. I pray thee, take the cork out of thy mouth, that I may drink thy tidings. So you may put a man in your belly. <laughs> <laughs> it is young Orlando! Orlando? Orlando! Alas the day! What shall I do with my doublet and hose? What did he when thou sawest him? What said he? How looked he? Did he ask for me? Where remains he? And when shalt thou see him again? Answer me in one word. You must borrow me Gargantua's mouth first. But doth he know that I am in this forest and in man's apparel? Sweet, say on! I found him under a tree like a dropped acorn. Soft. Comes he not here? Tis he. Slink by and note him. I will speak to him like a saucy lackey, and under that habit, play the knave with him. Do you hear, Forrester? Very well. What would you? There is a man haunts the forest that abuses our young plants with carving Rosalind on their barks. If I could meet that fancy monger, I would give him some good counsel. For he seems to have the quotidian of love upon him. I am he that is so love-shaped. I pray you, tell me your remedy. Love is merely a madness. Yet I profess curing it by counsel. Did you ever cure any so? Yes, 
one, and in this manner, he was to imagine me his love, his mistress, and I set him every day to woo me, and thus I cured him. I would not be cured, youth. I would cure you, if you would but call me Rosalind and come every day to my coach and woo me. Will you go? With all my heart, good youth. Nay, you must call me Rosalind. Come, sister, will you go? Come apace, good Audrey. I will fetch up your goats, Audrey. And how now, Audrey, am I the man yet? Doth my simple feature content you? Your features? Lord warrant us. What features? Well, I am here with thee and thy goats, as the most capricious poet, honest Ovid, was among the Goths. Uh, truly, I would the gods had made thee poetical. I do not know what po poetical is. Is it honest in deed and word? Is it a true thing? <laughs> No, truly, for the truest poetry is the most feigning, and lovers are given to poetry. Would you not have me honest? Oh, truly, and to cast away honesty upon a foul slut were to put good meat into an unclean dish. I am not a slut, although I thank the gods I am foul. Well, praised be the gods for thy foulness, Sluttishness may come hereafter, but be it as it may be, I will marry thee. Will the gods give us joy? Oh, come, sweet Audrey, we must be married, or we must live in Baudry. Sweet Phoebe, do not scorn me. If ever you meet in some fresh cheek the power of fancy, then shall you know the wounds invisible that love's keen arrows make? But till that time come not thou near me, and when that time comes, afflict me with thy mocks. Pity me not, as till that time I shall not pity thee. And why, I pray you, what though you have no beauty, must you therefore be proud and pitiless? Why, what means this? What do you look on me. I think she means to tangle my eyes, too. No faith, proud mistress, hope not after it. You, foolish shepherd, wherefore do you follow her like foggy south, puffing with wind and rain? Tis such fools as you that make the world full of ill-favored children. Mistress, <clears throat> so when you can, you are not for all markets. Cry the man mercy. Love him. Take his offer. Foul is most foul, being foul to be a scoffer. So take her to, he, to thee, shepherd. Fare you well. Youth, I pray you, chide a year together. I'd rather hear you chide than this man woo. He's fallen in love with your foulness, and she'll fall in love with my anger. I'll sauce her with bitter words. Why look you so upon me? I pray you. Do not fall in love with me, for I am falser than vows made in wine. Besides, I like you not. Shepherd, ply her hard. Whoever loved that loved not at first sight? Sweet Phoebe. Ha, what sayest now, Silvius? I would have you. Silvius, the time was that I hated thee, but since thou canst talk of love so well, thy company I will endure. Loose now and then a scattered smile, and that I live upon. Knowest now the youth that spoke to me erewhile? Not very well, but I have met him oft. Think not I love him, though I ask for him. There was a pretty redness in his lip. The best thing in him is his complexion. I love him not, nor hate him not. And yet I have more cause to hate him than to love him. For what had he to do to chide at me? I'll be bitter with him in passing short. Go with me, Silvius. Phoebe, with all my heart. Is 
least possible that on so little acquaintance you should like her, that but seeing you should love her, and loving woo, and wooing she should grant, and will you persevere to enjoy her? Neither call the giddiness of it in question, my sudden wooing, nor her son in consenting. I love Alina, consent with both that we may enjoy each other. It shall be to your good, for my father's house and all the revenue that was old Sir Roland's will I estate upon you, and here live and die a shepherd. You have my consent. Let your wedding be tomorrow. Go you and prepare Alina. Oh, my dear. <clears throat> your brother and my sister no sooner met, but they looked. No sooner looked, but they made a pair of stairs to marriage. They're in the very wrath of love, and they will together. Clubs cannot part them. They shall be married tomorrow, Ganymede. But, oh, how bitter a thing it is to look into happiness through another man's eyes. Why then? Tomorrow I cannot serve your turn for Rosaline? I can live no longer by thinking. Believe then, if you please, that I can do strange things. I have, since I was three years old, conversed with a magician. If you do love Rosaline, so only the heart as your gesture cries out. When your brother marries Alina, shall you marry her? Look, here comes a lover of mine and a lover of hers. You have done me much gentleness. You are there followed by a faithful shepherd. Look upon him. Love him. He worships you. Good shepherd, tell this youth what is to love. It is to be all made of sighs and tears, and so am I for Phoebe. And I for Ganymede. And I for Rosalind. And I for no woman. It is to be all made of faith and service, and so am I for Phoebe. And I for Ganymede. And I for Rosaline. And I for no woman. It is to be all made of fantasy, all made of passion, and all made of wishes, and so am I for Phoebe. And so am I for Ganymede. And so am I for Rosaline. And so am I for no woman. <clears throat> Pray you, no more of this, tis like the howling of virus wolves against the moon. I will help you if I can, I would love you if I could. Tomorrow, meet me all together. I will marry you if I ever marry woman, and I'll be married tomorrow. I will satisfy you if I've ever satisfied man, and you shall be married tomorrow. I will content you if what pleases you contents you. And you shall be married tomorrow. Dost thou believe, Orlando, that the boy can do all this that he has promised? I sometimes do believe and sometimes do not, as those that fear they hope and know they fear. With great importance and godliness. And is there mirth in heaven, when earthly things made even atone together? Good Duchess, receive thy daughter Hymen from heaven brought her, that thou mightst join her hand with his, whose heart within his bosom is. You I give myself, for I'm yours. There be truth in sight. You are my daughter! If there be truth in sight, you are my Rosaline. If sight and shape be true, why then, my love adieu. Peace, ho, I bar confusion. Tis I must make conclusion of these most strange events. Here's eight that must take hands to join in Hymen's bands, if truth holds true content. As a wedlock hymn we sing, Feed yourselves with questioning, that reason wonder may diminish, how thus we met, and these things finish. Proceed, proceed. We will begin these rites, as we do trust they'll end in true delights. fashion to see the lady the epilogue.
but it is no more unhandsome than to see the lord the prologue. If it be true that good wine needs no bush, tis true that a good play needs no epilogue. Yet, to good wine they do use good bushes, and good plays prove the better by the help of good epilogues. What a case am I in then either a good epilogue, nor can insinuate with you in the behalf of a good play. I am not furnished like a beggar, therefore to beg will not become me. My way is to conjure you, and I'll begin with the women. I charge you, O women, for the love you bear to men, to like as much of this play as please you. And I charge you, O men, for the love you bear to women, as I perceive by your simpering none of you hates them, that between you and the women the play may please. If I were a woman, I would kiss as many as of you as had beards that pleased me, complexions that liked me, and breaths that I defied not. And I am sure as many as have good beards or good faces or sweet breaths will for my kind offer, when I make curtsy, bid me farewell. <laughs>